This is a killer tune. This is Get the Funk Out by Extreme, and I'm sorry I can't do more of the solo there, but I can't play it yet. I've transcribed a, a big chunk of it, but I'm still learning it. Uh, that tapping bit, I find that really difficult. But anyway, today we're looking at the rest of the song, not the solo, okay? If I get the solo good enough to, you know, that I feel like I'm kind of confident playing it, then I'll teach it to you, but I kind of don't feel right trying to teach stuff I can't play. But I'm working on it because it's really great fun. Anyway. So what we're going to be looking at today are the six riffs that make up the rhythm guitar parts for Get the Funk Out. And there's some really killer, cool stuff going on in here. Nuno Betancourt is certainly one of the finest rock guitar players to ever grace the planet. Incredibly tight rhythmically. One really, really fantastic rhythm guitar player, you know. And there's lots of kind of interesting techniques just in the rhythm part, let alone the solo, which has got even more, you know, all of that funny arpeggio tapping and all that stuff that's uh, difficult around the fingers. This one's a little bit nicer on the fingers, but really interesting nevertheless. So. Uh, Let's get to a close-up and check out how to play them one at a time. Okay, riff number one is this. Okay, so it's really just picking this one note, which is the 15th fret of the thinner string, putting our little finger down there, and we're muting all of the other strings with fingers one, two, and three, just lightly touching, just to stop those strings ringing out. If you've got a lot of gain on, it's pretty important that you keep that under control, okay? So all that we're gonna be doing is relaxing the little finger to get a muted note on the thinner string, and we'll pick down, up, and then press the little finger down as we do the next down strum. So down, up, down. Okay, it's happening on beat three and four, so we have one, two, three, E, and, four, E, and, one, two, three, E, and, four, E, and, one, two, three, E, and, four, E, and. Okay, and then on the third time through, he replaces the first two notes with a triplet and goes, so down, up, down, up, down, up, down. Okay, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. A little bit tricky if you're not used to it, but it's not a particularly difficult little starter for this song. Okay, riff number two. <laughs> Okay, what a cool riff this is. Lots of interesting things going on. So uh, we're starting off with fingers three and four in fret three of the middle two strings. We're gonna slide that up two frets and then back again. Okay, really important that you realize that the other fingers, that's one and two and the thumb, are hanging around trying to mute up all of the other strings. Otherwise it's gonna get well messy with a lot of distortion. So uh, slide up, then back. Also, we've got a bit of vibrato going on there with uh, fingers three and four. Okay, it's part of the riff as well. So, you know, a lot easier to get vibrato like that with two individual fingers, and especially having the other two to cover everything up uh, up behind is a pretty big deal. So, 
Now there's a little beforehand. I'm going to try and explain as many of these rhythmic things as I can, but it's going to be a lot easier for me to just show you really that essentially the fingering and you have a listen and uh, see if you can get those parts together because they're they're not all together consistent all of the way through the through every different verse, but uh, you know they're fairly consistent and worth picking up on. So anyway. <laughs> Okay, we've got this little sus thing now, so our third finger is uh, fretting the fifth fret, a little mini bar covering strings two, three, and four, making sure the tip of the finger is muting string five, and little finger is going to go down on the sixth fret of the second string, and then lift off to C. That's what's going on, it's like a C, regular C uh, bar chord kind of thing with the little finger going down on the sus. Okay, except we're not playing the C in this case, they're just other fingers behind are doing that muting thing again. And then... Okay, three, four... Okay, so this is doing, going, uh, it's using octaves. Okay, which is the uh, first finger in the uh, first fret of the fifth string, a little finger in the third fret of the third string. Okay, that's a B flat, and that's sliding up to a C. But we've got this little kind of run into it, which is going to be third finger on the third fret of the thicker string, and then the open A string. But it's very, you know, you have to play it at half speed to really hear what's going on, uh, to hear it clearly. But it is there, you know, and uh, so it's worth kind of being aware of it, that, that, that it's there. Um, these kind of riffs, it's very difficult for me to explain. Uh, I'm not exactly sure how this is going to go, so hopefully you give me some feedback, let me know if this is working for you or not. Yeah, so we get that G, A, B. And then there's another little kind of muted, and then a bass note again. Pretty much Nuno keeps the hand, strumming hand moving by the way, so if there's a note on the beat it's going to take a down strum and if it's on a and it'll take a down strum because it's 6 eighth, 1 E and a 2 E and a 3 E and a 4 <laughs> Okay, lots of variations if you watch it live as well, the way, the way he does the slide, but it's a really interesting technique going on in this song as well, which is kind of strumming pinch harmonics. So if you just leave those fingers, third and fourth fingers down the third fret of the middle two strings, and try and do a pinch harmonic over two strings and, and experiment with where it is. You can hear there's quite a range of different harmonics that you can get, and I haven't tried to figure out exactly what, uh, what ones are being used where, um, but there's definitely quite a lot of that sort of uh, pinch harmonic stuff going on as well. It sounds a bit more squealy than... Doesn't sound like that. So I'm essentially trying to dig in and get pinch harmonics on all of those. <laughs> Great riff, it really, really is uh, very, very special. Let me play it for you real slow. Three, four. <laughs> Thank you.
Okay, really, really uh, great riff that one. It's going to take you a little bit of practice. It's taken me quite a lot of practice. But what I have found is that once I transcribed it and work out where the notes are, which is what I'm showing you, just playing it through a bunch of times and remembering to try and keep my strumming hand moving seemed to inform where all of the, the little percussive things were. You know, just by listening and remembering where the notes were and that, that you know that that hand would be moving it, it really helps. So that's that would be my advice to you as well. So uh, riff number three is uh, the kind of the pre-chorusing, pretty simple part really. Uh, it's just a B-flat power chord, so uh, first fret, third fret, third fret on the fifth, fourth and third strings. You're all invited to the party, up two frets to C, you know you didn't have to come. Then we got an E-flat seven. This is second finger on the sixth fret of the fifth string, first finger on the fifth fret of the fourth string, and third finger on the sixth fret of the third string. Okay, again, making sure that all of the other strings are muted that you don't want to play. Thumb will probably be muting the thicker strings and the fingers underneath here, the second finger and the first finger laying down so you can kind of get a bit of bit of vibrato without too many other strings ringing out. Uh, and then that moves up two frets, which is the F7. Uh, and note as well the rhythm there, there's some crotchet triplet hits. So we've got this one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, one, Okay, really, really important that you get those little hits. You can hear it quite clearly in the in the drums. I wouldn't be too worried about trying to count it exactly. So uh, into riff four, which is the kind of the main chorus riff. Very, very cool. Um, I must say I got a little bit of help from Nuno. I found a, a very old video of him teaching it and uh, it was a little bit different to uh, the way I'd been playing it before. I used to play this in bands many, many years ago, uh, probably when it came out, uh, and I definitely didn't play it correctly, but what I'm going to show you now is, is the way that Nuno plays it. So uh, the riff is this. Very, 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 very cool. Um, we got here a G chord. So we go. So it's bass. No, it's a G chord, G5 power chord, but without the first fingers. So second finger on the third fret, thicker string. Mute, open, open, third fret, third fret. Bass. Now can you see the hands going bass? Up. Okay, it's really important that you get that idea that the hand's moving. doing this all the time. It's not necessarily clicking, but it's making that motion of 16th notes, right? So after we play the down and the up, we shift our hand position, put the first finger in the third fret of the thicker string. We're going to play... Okay, starting with an up pick, where we're going third fret, fifth fret, sixth fret, Three, three, five, six, three. Okay, it's the first part of the riff to get down. Okay, and then there's actually two little mutes as well. Sometimes Nuno does live, he does a little step up uh, there, but just you want to work on the doing the two mutes. So really slowly, one E and up, two E and a three E and a four and a one E and up, two E and a three E and a four and a one E and up, two E and a three E and a four and a one E and Okay, you can see that strumming hand moving all the time, big deal, okay? So I just noticed sometimes when I'm doing this, I'm uh, playing an open E in the transition between the, the, the G riff kind of thing and the open chord. I think they should be muted, at least that's what I've written in my transcription, not the open E. So it should be... Okay, just little as you're transitioning 
should be two little mutes. But as I said, sometimes live, Nuno does little... Uh, does this little kind of fancy thing, little run up there. It's not on the record, but uh, there's quite a few videos where he does it live. Okay, now we move to a C power chord. We've got this very, very cool little riff, uh, which I played completely differently until I'd seen this video of uh, Nuno showing how he plays the riff. But uh, so I'm going to show you his authentic way. It does feel better. So uh, it's this. <laughs> Okay, so C power chord, third finger sliding from the sixth fret to the seventh fret on the fifth string, then first finger on the fifth fret of the third string, and back to the seventh fret on the fifth string. And we do a very similar movement now, but sliding third finger from the seventh fret to the eighth fret, back to this C note again, the fifth fret on the third string, and then back to that, and then we've got again the that motion from the 6th fret to the 7th fret. So... So this is now 7th fret to 8th fret slide on the 4th string. And then 8 to 7. 5th fret. 5th fret on the 4th string. And then there's a 5th fret to 7th fret hammer on. Again, slower. first time it's got the, just a little slide down the last time. Up to full speed. Okay, really. I mean, it's just so, so good. Um, that's kind of the, the, the main feature riff, I think, for me. That's really, really lovely. And trying to get, again, keeping the, the rhythm hand consistently moving and all of those sort of things makes it quite challenging, but, but, but very, very good. So uh, after the second chorus, there's a really nice little kind of group of five on a G blues scale. Uh, and what I mean by that is, it's starting on this, um, it's this run, I should play it for you first, I suppose, it's this. So what we're doing here really is melodic groups of five. They're still playing regular sixteenth notes, but it's kind of a melodic pattern of five notes where we play four and rest on one. So we've got this idea, I'll just do it slowly. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four. Five. Changes a little bit at the end, but uh, it's important to get that that's what's happening. It's just this little little pattern, very common. That's a very, very common rock thing. But the idea of leaving a rest in between each group of four makes it extra cool. So. Okay, I'm going to play this riff for you nice and slowly. I just started trying to count it out fret by fret, but if you're good enough to learn this song, you're good enough to learn a fairly simple riff like this from me playing it very slowly for you. So here we go. This is the riff now. Okay, it's oh, just this scale. Okay, but we're playing little groups of four. There's the first one. Second one is this. Third one is this. Okay. And then it changes up because it's, ch uh, you know, it stops doing the groups. Okay. 
Okay, just watch out for that ending, it's a little bit weird. A little bit awkward under the fingers as well. First fret, first fret, third fret, first fret, then one, two. So after that, we're now into the last riff that we're going to be checking out today, which is the kind of lead up into the solo. Very, very cool little riff. Not particularly difficult, really, for a, for a Nuno Betancourt part, but uh, very, very cool. Uh, it's this. Okay, very, very nice. Um, and not too difficult. It's important to realize here that uh, it's all 16th note off beats. So Nuno is playing it all with up picks. I find it a little easier to use down picks personally for, for this riff, but uh, Nuno's definitely using up picks, you know, because again, he's, he's pretty consistent about his picking direction and his, in his hand movement. So uh, you could either use down picks with a bit of palm mute or up picks. Uh, up picks are a little harder to get with the, with the palm mute, but let me take you through the riff, the, the frets. One, three, one, two, three, four, five, three, four, five. Okay? Okay, down, up, down, obviously, when you at the end. So down, up, 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 down, up, down, down, up, 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 down, up, down. Same thing, a string thicker. Okay, but there's a little change there. It's just adding a little after it gets to the third fret. It's playing the third fret again with the third finger on the fifth string. Slide up and back. Flick it off to the first finger in the first fret. Then third fret, first fret. Okay, so. Okay, again, all of the way through that, you want to be making sure the fingers are as flat as possible and resting on the strings so they keep them from ringing out uh, and getting, you know, unwanted string noises. Well, I really hope you've enjoyed this lesson today. It is a pretty complicated song, and if you're at the level where you're playing this kind of tune, you definitely need to be using your ears as well as lessons or tabs or whatever it is. You know, if you can transcribe, great. This is a kind of a fairly complicated song on the, to transcribe, particularly the solo, but the rest of it as well is, there's a lot of little subtle things going in that took me a bit of research. It wasn't just the notes. I transcribed it, wrote it all out, and then I started doing a bit of research, watching videos of Nuno playing it, trying to figure out like what finger he might use where, and how he was uh, changing his pick and directions and stuff like that. It's a fairly detailed kind of an experience, but really, really valuable if you can get yourself into doing it. I know it's difficult. Uh, transcribing these kind of things takes hours. It did for me too, right? But, you know, I think it's really worth it. If you're not at the point where you can be transcribing stuff, you need to be listening still, okay? So using what I've given you here in conjunction with listening to the original recording. I definitely think you should have some kind of digital playback where you can change the speed because that's definitely helpful for hearing the way he's doing the kind of the percussive stuff, those little muted hits and stuff, a really big part of the grooves in this, in, in extreme music generally actually. And uh, so and it's definitely, it becomes clearer when you listen to stuff a bit slower. And I'm not saying you should do all your transcribing at half speed, but you know, having a listen every now and again can, can add a bit of clarity to stuff. And definitely when you're learning it, when you're learning this song, having a digital playback thing that can slow it down to say, 60 or 70 percent that you can play along with slower and help get yourself to put those puzzle pieces together because some of the time that's the, the difficult part. You might be able to play the riffs individually but linking them up one after the other can be well, challenging to say the least you know and uh, for myself now I've, I'm, I'm learning the solo I'm not going to try and teach it till it, I can play it properly and, and that may, ne might never happen so I don't want to promise. You know I'm having a go at it I've tr transcribed most of it and uh, I'm kind of at about 50-60% speed for most of it, and uh, which is 
all right, you know, and that's, it's important that you guys realize as well, it's not for me like I just sit down and have a listen to it and burn out these solos, you know, I have to sit down, transcribe it, write it out, and then I have to practice real slow, Try, you know, that little tapping thing at the moment, I'm still practicing it really slowly, right? It's important, really important that you get that it's not just, for most people, it doesn't just happen straight away. I've been playing guitar a long time, but I'm still practicing going like... <laughs> Okay, that sort of speed. I'm just trying to do it nice and evenly, keep the strings clean, trying to get that, you know, that little part together. And I'll practice that for hours, just trying to get it right and make it feel good. And hopefully, eventually, I'll be able to work it in with the rest of the solo and do a lesson for you and, you know, help you guys be able to play it as well. But these sort of things, you know, and even this song, the, the, the riffs in this song, if it's technically difficult for you, slow it down a bit, make sure you practice it real, real nice and slow, try and get it under your fingers comfortably before you start speeding it up. It really, really is an important thing if you're getting into, into rock or anything that's kind of complicated, that you realize that slowing down is the thing that's gonna help you get faster, not trying to play fast, okay? You just end up, you know, practicing playing really crappy fast. And, and that's not right. You have gotta be practicing really well slowly and then speeding that up, right? So enough of my little lectures. I really hope that you've enjoyed this song. Let me know in the comments section and hopefully I'll see you for the solo for this sometime very soon. You take care of yourselves. Bye-bye.